morning, my name is Liz Ward and this is the Yarn Waffle Podcast. <laughs> Sorry for the giggling. It's, it's kind of a mania induced giggling at the moment because if I'm not laughing I'm going to be bursting into tears. This episode is not going to be easy. But let's get cracking shall we? So, start off with the sad news that um, I'm joined by Cal today uh, because I lost Cassie last week. Okay. Um, I'm okay. Right. So let's start off this episode with what I'm wearing. And today I am wearing my Ingle sweater uh, by Caitlin Hunter of Boiler Knitworks. And, and I've knit this mainly in um, Wensleydale Longwool in, I think it's a seafoam colourway. It's a beautiful pale greeny blue, just one of my favourite, absolute favourite colours. And um, these sort of plants at the top, it's very actually difficult to see the colour work because I chose quite a low contrast colour. Um, this is knit in a yarn I dyed to go with um, a mohair that I got from Solstice Yarns in the winter colourway. So I've held them together in this part here and there is just a little bit of lace here as well. Um, it's it's very oversized is this, you can see there's a lot of um, positive ease, lots of room in there which I like. The sleeves are very blousy, uh, no decreasing you just pretty much carry on all the way down and decrease before you get to the cuff which I wasn't sure I would like but actually I do I mean I wear most of my sweaters rolled up like this and I think it gives it quite a nice look I maybe would have liked it to be slightly longer you can't really see where I am there is some short row shaping on the back um, yeah I like it it knit up fairly easily. Um, I had a few issues with the main yarn, the um, Wensleydale. It is um, a long staple fibre and um, when you're actually knitting with it, it does have a lovely floof. I don't know if you can see, can you see my halo? Um, it's very floofy. Um, but when you're knitting with it, it, it looks very crepey. Um, very wrinkly and it's difficult to get an even sort of texture throughout um, and when I was knitting this it just looked sad and it was a challenge beyond belief just to continue knitting something that looked so awful um, I had faith that at the end when I blocked it, it should smooth out somewhat, but I didn't know how much. Um, lots of ums today, sorry. Um, <laughs> um, um, uh, yeah, so it was a bit of sort of battle of wills just to um, just to keep on knitting, so to speak. And um, I finished it. I blocked it. It blocked out beautifully. It went from being something that looked like crepe paper or scrumpled up tissue paper um, to the beautiful sheen knit fabric it does actually I've noticed crinkle quite a bit even after that I mean it's been only folded up in the cupboard but there's a few creases in there yeah she's only been worn a few times since I made her because it's been quite warm over summer and I think I finished it in the spring um but yeah this is my Ingalls sweater I would quite like to knit another one, it may be in a different colour. I really like this colour on me, but it's, it's, uh, lighter colours aren't something I gravitate to. Ooh. I really like this colour, but um, lighter colours aren't what I gravitate to first. I prefer darker colours. Um, it's, while this colour is beautiful, I, d I don't think wearing it with black trousers does anything for it, and I struggle to get anything but black trousers that aren't in silly fashionable styles like cropped or tapered I just want bog standard work trousers and I can't find okay so that is what I am wearing let us move in to um finished objects now it's been a it's been a bit of a, a, a weird couple of weeks um 
I, there has been a lot of knitting but mainly just a lot of stocking it but that said I do have a finished object or it's socks it's another pair of Christmas socks and these are the ones that I'm calling my quality street socks if you can hear jingling in the background Cal's just come in and got on, on her hammock I might try and persuade her to come over in a bit um yeah so these are knit out of uh, Minnie's I dyed up and I was just mainly testing the dyes that I had to see what different concentrations of the dye stock and what different colours it would give me so I ended up with a lot of Minnie's and um, I picked out these five because I thought they were quite rich jewel tones and decided just to stripe them together in a Christmas shop it, to make a, a Christmas sock because I, at that point I did not have a lot of Christmas yarn that situation has changed but at that point I decided to make some of my own so yeah uh, these are knit on 2.25 needles uh, 64 stitches I use the magic loop method and I have um, I think I knit these on higher higher shops and um, so yeah I've just done um, it's a 2 by uh, 2 by 2 um, cuff and then I've done five rows of each stripe and then when I got to the heel I just took what would be the next stripe colour and did the heel in that colour and on the same here I didn't want them to match so I deliberately made sure they didn't and then when I got to the toes I was going to do the same and do a contrast but I think when I was doing the first one I forgot so I just continued the striping and I love how that's worked out there is something amiss with the toes they don't quite match up with the decreasing I think one has more um more what's the word rapid decreasing than the others so one has gone to a slight point and one is more rounded but that's fine these are for me also because we are knitters and we point out our mistakes on the second sock it, there is a stripe less fewer I missed out a stripe in the foot of the second sock that was because I, wa I wanted a finished object for this week and there wasn't much um, it, that was close to being finished so I decided to knit the second sock in a day and a half which I did and I have a finished object um, but yeah it was a bit rushed and a bit um, I didn't count properly also full disclosure many would say these are not a finished object because they have I don't know if you can see this probably a million and one ends to be sewn in I will show you I still count this as a finished object because they are off the needles. Sewing in ends is something that I can happily do whilst that, you know, but yeah. All the ends, so many ends. <laughs> so yeah, I will happily sit and sew all those in. But I wasn't going to do that before recording this morning because I think if I did that would be too much procrastination and getting my arse into gear to record this morning was going to be difficult enough was difficult enough but I'm so I do have a second finished object and I had I have been watching an awful lot of podcasts this week knitting podcasts mainly just as I've been sat and knitting them around I think I've also watched um I watched all of is it Carnival Row? all of the new season of The Crown and all of the new season of Britannia so yeah there has been a lot of knitting going on this week just while I was just sitting and knitting and not particularly wanting to do anything ever, anything really just feeling very sad and um but yeah I've been watching a lot of people starting to make Christmas ornaments out of knitting and I've made a lot out of crochet I showed on last week's episode my um my sort of fancy um, crochet bubble pattern which I released on that episode and um, I 
I wasn't particularly keen on the idea of having a go at making a knitted one because they never look particularly round and they are very fiddly to start off. You're going to start off with very few stitches on DPNs and you are going to be fighting pointy sticks and yourself and it just seemed far too much hassle. But as I was finishing these socks I had an idea because nothing since learning you know to do grafting properly there's nothing to say that I have to start at the top of a sphere and end at the bottom of a sphere I can start in the middle and make two ends and graft them together or I could start at the widest point work all the widest point decrease then pick up the stitches and decrease for the top or bottom and that's what I decided to do but also I had the problem of wanting it to look very round and I think with toy stuffing that's never going to happen especially with knitting because it's too stretchy crochet is quite firm and even then it's difficult to get a round shape using toy stuffing you really have to ram it, ram it in there so what I did was I grabbed a, a bauble exhibit A and um, I grabbed my sock that I had finished and I put it inside Te this is this is this is the technical stuff for you here and what I did was I sort of pinched it like that at its widest point you see and I counted because you can see where the halfway point is so I counted the additional stitches and added it to the 32 that were on this side and I came up with a number close to 48 now 48 is a great number for colour work because this is where my geeky brain goes out so if anyone wants to tune out why I spout a load of numbers feel free yeah 48 can be divided by 2, 4, 3, 6, 8, 12 and 16 which means if you're going to do any colour work it pretty much fits that uh, so I provisionally cast on 48 stitches and um, looking on this I didn't think I would have much room to do colour work in the middle um, it's really weird because my face is being reflected back to me in the bauble and it's kind of a woo um, so I had planned to do just a checkerboard effect and I saw if I did nine rows and then started to decrease picked up the stitches and then decreased on the other side it would cover the bauble this is so cute by the way look, look at this look at it I cover my face so it actually focuses so as you can see the first checkerboard did not cover it it only covered half so the green line in the middle is where I picked up stitches and then I knit the other half and this has actually been knit around that actual bauble but the only bit that I did on DPNs was those decreases at the end so it was fiddly for about four rows but because it was fiddly at the end rather than at the beginning there was more to hold on to and now I know how many rows I have in the middle I know what colour work I can fit in there and because it's 48 stitches there's a lot we can play with a lot of different designs we can play with this I started at half past five last night I worked on it for an hour last night and did the first half and I worked on it for half an hour this morning and finished it so that is an hour and a half of knitting you do not have to sew in any ends because they are encased inside and yeah it is it's round it's round I don't know why this is so exciting to me it's not I mean it's it's red and green but it's not particularly Christmassy this was just literally a this is an idea let's give it a try that's where you can see all the blippy bits which is untidy but yeah it was an idea it's you can the bobble is in there yeah so I love it and um, we'll put it on our little tree this will be my Christmas tree this is gonna fall off dramatic falling off 
Oh, it doesn't. Let's leave it there. <laughs> okay. Shall we move into works in progress? Uh, da -da -da -da. So what is in this bag? Boom. Nothing. This is the leftovers from those socks. So let's move into this bag. This bag was made by me. All my project bags, apart from my sheepy tote bag, are made by me. Um, mainly just... Yeah. I don't sew bags very often. But more on that later. So this big, black, this big black floofiness, which I can now hide behind and completely obscure the screen, is uh, my easy one by Hokey Locatelli. It is knit out of drop, drops, drops something, drops Nord, drops Nepal, drops. It's a four ply in the drops range, and it was on sale. And I wanted a big black sweater, so that's what I chose to use. And I'm also using the. Um, the kid silk in the drops range as well because it is very economical in price and again I wanted a big huge sweater and I didn't want it to cost a hundred pounds so that is what I am using and this I'm still on the body of this sweater we've still got my lovely little black sheep um, stitch marker from Hannah of Corner of Craft and, and he keeps me company every every round and I move this onto longer needles this is knit on 3.5 millimeter needles it's meant to be just for four ply but I am using the four ply and the mohair together and I pretty much have gauge um, and it is a jumper that never ends I can it's 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 so going if I'm I'm not working on this constantly. It is a case of I'm picking it up and putting it down. And on a good day of doing that, I can get about three to four inches knit on the body. And every day for the past three or four days, I've knit three or four inches on the body and got to the end and thought, it probably needs another three or four inches. So the next day I, I knit another three or four inches and then I look and I'm like, probably needs another three or four inches this happened about three or four times and then I put it onto these longer needles so I could try it on and I tried it on and it fits and the armholes fit and that's all great but it probably needs another three or four inches I would like it to cover my bum and it's not going to do that at the moment there is going to be a bit of a hem I am tempted to do a split hem I'm tempted to do a slight high low hem or put some short row shaping into the back so you get that scoop and it'll go down over your bum but don't know I kind of want to keep it simple because it is the easy one um don't know at the moment I'm just gonna keep knitting just keep knitting but yeah it's not a very exciting program um project to show on the podcast because it is just a big floofy floofy load of black um, but I know I'm going to get an awful lot of wear out of this and this is my entry into um, Christine of Vull and Vine's Practical where we are being asked to make a practical garment and I think that is exactly what this is um, yeah I might be wearing this on the next podcast I really shouldn't say that should I but yes that is my easy one and um, that is living in that bag and should we do starflake next some progress has been made but not a lot don't get too excited um it's it's a beast is this it just keeps going so on the last podcast i had fi finally finished um yeah, on the last podcast I had finally finished uh, Clue 2 and was starting on Clue 3. At least I think that was the case. Do shout at me at the comments if that's not the case. Um, so, 
no that is wrong okay this is so on last week's on on the last podcast i had completed um clue two and started clue three and i had done all the little sort of these sort of little little hillocks and the wedges at the end and then the last part this is literally just a tangle of yarn the last part of clue three introduces these eyelet sections which are lovely um there are a few mistakes nobody is ever going to notice them it's in this last section I won't know. Yeah, yeah. So if you could spot my mistake, let me know. So yeah, so I have got one more eyelet row to do, and then I am onto the final section, which is orgata, and it will be orgata in this beautiful speckled. I think that's the wrong way out. No, it's not. Yes, it is. <laughs> Yeah, it will be all garter in this speckle and then I will be finishing with an I-cord bind off. And um, this is not what I'm picking up the most often this morning, just this morning. This is not what I'm picking up the most at the moment just because this project is um, heavy. It takes a long time to do every row and yeah, it requires a bit more concentration. Not a lot, but a bit. So yeah. Progress is being made. This is another project I'm hoping to have finished very soon. So, work in progress number three. This is in another bag that I made. This is one of the first project bags I made, which is incredibly grubby now, but it still does its job. And um, this is my fledgling second litmus cow. Doesn't it look beautiful? So this is a pattern by Amy Florence of the Stranded podcast, or uh, Stranded Dye Works, it's her dye company, and it is pretty much a massive sock. Um, you start with a provisional cast on, and um, I've used 90 stitches, I don't know, I used more than 90 stitches because I'm doing this on a a circular that size circular um no idea yeah it, i'm doing i'm doing this on uh, a small circular it's not a nine inch circular because i can't work on that it's the next one up um yeah so i'm doing this on a circular and when i cast on 90 stitches it didn't seem enough to be easy working the round so i think i then increased to about 100 or so and I, I think the pattern says to do 10 rows in each repeat and I am doing 8. Which is what I did on my previous litmus cowl and it got enough repeats. Because again there's some sort of, you, there's some fiddly maths to be done with this. Because I only have, I have 10 gram minis with what I'm using. And it is this that I'm using which is um the lay family yarn and it's the earth toned minis and you get 12 10 gram minis and i'm using them in the order they came in the pack which again i'm just i'm just gonna keep flushing this because it's so pretty um and uh, my main color is uh, is by ducky darlings of course it is and it's the rust bucket colorway and it's beautiful and i was supposed i got this as a set of three that I was going to use together and I probably will but I'll just have to get another another thing of rust bucket but I still haven't thought of a project for that so I was like well I'll just use it for this little little snag there where the cat got it um yeah it's beautiful but I didn't know how many repeats of the colorway I was gonna get until I'd worked the first two because when you're when you've got like 10 gram minis a normal kitchen scale won't register 
how much this weighs it just gives you it pretty much just rounds it up to five grams whatever it is unless you've got micro scales which i had but they broke uh, because i got them wet so i didn't want to buy more micro scales so i had to do best judgment on this that is how much i have left after two repeats of that color compared to that's after this, this looks this look this is very helpful for people that, that you will not be able to tell the difference in a hand sized thingy but anyway to cut a long story short as the battery is now deciding to go down to two bars so it better be slightly speedy um i should get about four repeats of the color so that would be nice and long as long as the main color holds out we'll get a nice long cowl did i even say this was a cowl i'm doing very well today you can tell can't you um yeah so this this will be a cowl that will wrap around and you graft the ends together and yeah it's going to be lovely um it may be a gift as so mum was hinting very hard when i was wearing mine um but i do love it but i only have one more fo to show and then we are into acquisitions yeah okay so this is a new project bag woo that i made myself and um yeah as i was saying before i don't sew very often but i had a bit of a week and um coming into the studio without Cassie being here this was really really difficult so I needed to do something that I wouldn't normally be doing in here and so I decided to have a sewing day on the day after she died um so yeah I decided to have a sewing day and I will talk about that more in a little bit because anyway <laughs> This is the Hollyberry Holly Berry colorway from West Yorkshire Spinners and this is the Christmas colorway from I think about three years ago and I have a finished sock bar kitchenering the toe um yeah it, I should I should have finished this before I started but then I just as I was bringing all the bits upstairs I was like I forgot to kitchen that toe toe so it's it's not we, we all know my feelings about half finished objects anyway so I have nearly finished the second sock and I, when I have finished uh, recording this I will um, kitchener this together because I can do that now uh, and I will cast on the second sock and get knitting again with this one I had intended to do the contrast this is the KN Pepper colourway also by uh, West Yorkshire Spinners I had intended to do this as the toe um, but it just didn't happen i i don't know why i think i was just continuing going round and round oh no i do know why i wound off a little ball of this to do as the toe and i took this with me as travel knitting and i left this behind so if i wanted to continue knitting i just couldn't do the contrast color so yeah that's what happened and i i, I don't hate it it's lovely and so the Quality Street socks, I think, are sock number six from my Christmas box of socks. So this would be pair number seven when it's complete. And I think that means it's time to cast on another pair of Christmas socks. But yes, I am rapidly running out of battery, so I better speedy up. Um, I will take these out because I want to talk more about these bags in a little bit. Um, Oh, barbels on the floor and everything. Right, so let's do acquisitions and let's crinkling. This lovely uh, bag is a um, seasonal gift in yarn bag from Homespun Wonders and this is her December um, or winter themed one. And it came with a load of goodies inside and I've had this for um, a, over, over a week or so. so things have been um, dispersed. There, there was a lovely little sign which says all you need in love. Uh, it also came with a coffee cup, travel coffee cup, um, which I gave to a friend and work colleague of mine because she'd literally just broken hers and I was able to be like, here, 
have this. Um, there are sweeties and there was a, a lovely little, um, oh, oh, I've got it somewhere. This is what you do when your battery is running out, you start searching for things. Hang on. This lovely little, hang on, can we get that to focus? Ladybird stitch marker. And also, I'm fairly sure that that little Christmas tree was from Homespun Wonders as well, from her Christmas Eve box last year. And um, yes, so big fan of Homespun Wonders. What else was. Uh, yes, all the rest of it. But what the yarn that came with this is just incredible. The, the value for money in these kits that she does is, is seriously so cool. You should definitely go and check her out. Um, uh, yeah, so she is Homespun Wonders. That is her logo and all the details there, but they will also all be on the screen. Um, and this is her colourway Winter Song and it comes with two minis. And it's on a Stellina, sparkling Stellina base. I don't know if we can read really, Oh, we can actually. Look at that. Look at that sparkle. Ooh. Um, it's beautiful. It's so lovely. Um, and I'm currently doing fibre share and I was quite tempted to send this to my fibre share partner because it's Yorkshire Dales yarn. Um, but no. <laughs> Sorry, my fibre share partner. You will be getting beautiful yarn, a beautiful yarn from Yorkshire, but you will not be getting this because it's too pretty and too Christmassy and I have to, I have to have it, it has to be mine. So yeah, I absolutely love this. Um, yeah. So check out her Etsy shop, uh, uh, amazing value for money, absolutely incredible, love it. Um, sticking slightly with Christmas, I was very lucky and managed to get um, hold of the Yarn Badger's Christmas knit along wham themed self striping sock and yeah it's, it sounds like quite a party and I'm quite happy that I'm going to be a part of it and yes I was able to to sneak in and get one of her special um knit along boxes and there is all sorts of goodies in this box um I am not going to well for a start some of them are wrapped I'm definitely not going to open that and there is a card that I am not going to open until December the 1st but there is the yarn which is, comes all caked up and it is self striping and it is the Wham Cal is that focusing by the Yarn Badger but it's amazing and I think the idea is we knit a stripe a day every day of advent Unless you get whammed, in which case, if you hear Last Christmas by Wham, on any day you have to knit a stripe in the special yarn that comes with it, which is delightful. I mean, look at that, that's absolutely glorious. I just want a whole skein of this. Um, now this is going to be difficult because there is a film out this year based on the songs of Wham and George Michael called Last Christmas that is pretty much being advertised every single time I turn on the telly at the moment. So I actually might need a full skein of this just to, because I'm not going to get any stripes of that, I'm going to be whammed every single day. But yes, that is a fun thing to look forward to and that will, is my um, Yarny advent treat. Knitting or something every day of um, December feels like more my happy place than having a piece of chocolate every day. Uh, so last we have the the Ducky Darlings Mystery Club and these are all based on the Childhood Ladybird books and this month is based on the Gingerbread Man. Very excited about this. Um, love gingerbread, love the Gingerbread Man story and pretty much it's just it's my it's it's my my happy place when it comes to colours is anything sort of autumny and ginger based. So uh, yeah, and I was not disappointed. Because we got a sock set. <laughs> Don't think I need to say spoilers if you if you haven't opened yours yet, because these have all gone out to people. Um, yeah, so this is the Gingerbread Crumble colourway, which is her um, club exclusive. It comes with this mini in this beautiful cinnamon brown, and then we have 
oh, this, I mean, it's just everything, isn't it? Look at all the colours in there. It's it's a light brown, beige, peachy base with lots of red, brown, ochre, speckles, and it just ho ho ho. Yep. She's done it. Haley, you've done it again. It's just amazing. Thank you so much. I love it, I love it, I love it. And that is about it. Um I Forgotten to talk about crochet this week, and I have actually done some crochet this week. Um, I don't know if you can see behind me, I might have to actually move the bauble. We have our, our new studio, studio decoration of my ficus, which is now decorated by... It's not Christmas lights yet, but it will head that way. And um, this week I have made a pot for it. I don't know if you can see it. Uh, it is crocheted in the um, hooked zabaghetti. Is that the right way to say that? Uh, the big chunky t-shirt yarn. You may have noticed on the podcast there's been a big ball of it on the side waiting for me to do something with it for ages. And um, it's very simple. I'm not going to write a pattern for it because all you're doing is you're starting with six stitches and you're increasing um, six stitches every round until you are, you, that makes a flat piece and you want to be as wide as the bottom of your plant pot. At that point you're just going to crochet, and this is single crochet American terms, double crochet UK terms, you are going to be doing a single crochet all the way up until it is tall enough. And that is all in the grey and then what I did then was I masked off where I wanted to put this dipped paint and I painted the base in the orange and just left it to dry and it's got my, my ficus in it. I've wanted a ficus for ages. Okay, so yeah, so that has, we have reached pretty much the end of the podcast. Um, few bits to talk about which probably will end up with me in floods of tears. As you probably have noticed this has been a lot quieter episode, we're not being interrupted and that is because um, I lost Cassie this week. There'll be quite a few um, cuts in this bit. Yeah, Cassie's um, been on this podcast since the beginning, um, usually disrupting me, but I absolutely love her, as you know. Um, Cassie was only eight. I didn't think she was poorly. Um, she had lost some weight and I was had considered that maybe she needed worming um, but I just hadn't been anywhere that had worming tablets they all have the spot on stuff now which is completely useless to Bengals because their fur is so dense you can't get it through um, and then I was also um, giving her little extra treats and food just because I just wanted to try and feed her up a little bit because she had just lost a little bit of weight since we moved to this house but other than that I didn't consider her to have any behaviour that you would have with an ill cat. She wasn't hiding, she wasn't not eating, she was eating absolutely fine, she wasn't being sick, um, there wasn't any changes in her behaviour. Um, so I had no suspicion that she was poorly. I came home um, with my mum, uh, we'd, we'd been shopping on Tuesday morning and I came home with my aunt, you know, shopping bags and whatnot and um, I just heard this cry and if you have cats you know that they use different cries to communicate with their humans and um, that's the sort of cry you never want to hear because I knew instantly there was something very very wrong um, so I rushed upstairs and Cassie was in here, in the studio. So she came out to me and um, she looked like she was struggling to breathe. And she looked very ill. Um, and I sort of... I am one of those people that's good in a crisis. 
so I went into uh, she bear mode, <laughs> or she ra mode maybe, and uh, pretty much just sort of went, Cassie's not well, we need to go to the vet. So I was also due at Dutton's that afternoon and I needed to sort that out. So I pretty much flew down the stairs and flew into my mum coming through the stairs who then blocked the door and I pretty much, I think I like, climbed over her. Adrenaline takes over and um, yeah. So I rang, so in the process of dashing to get the cat basket out of the shed to get Cassie to the vets, I phoned my vets and I phoned work and um, I got the cat basket, I threw a towel in it, I came back upstairs and mum had picked Cassie up which drove me slightly insane because Cassie hates being picked up by anybody but me um, and yeah I got Cassie in the uh, cat carrier and got her to the vets and this all happened very very quickly uh, we, so we got her to the emergency vets, we got lost following sat nav down the street um, it's, it's a one long street and we managed to get lost, bless my mum's driving. Um, I don't drive myself so I was incredibly lucky that she was here and we could dash over because otherwise I'd been waiting for a taxi or just literally running with a very poorly cat which is probably not a good idea because it's a couple of miles over to Fulford where the vets is. Um, so yeah, so I ended up getting out the car and sort of dashing uh, back to the main road to the vets with Cassie and um, yeah. I thought she might have had something stuck in her throat and was struggling to breathe. Uh, the vets were incredible. Uh, they had, I think they might have been doing some sort of training or something because they had a special person in that could do special scans, luckily, that day. Um, so they got um, Cassie scanned straight away and I was asked to, st asked to stay. At that point I knew that she was very, very poorly because otherwise it would be a case of treatment but no it was a case of that decision had to be made and the vet came out and told me that that they'd been able to do these 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 fancy scans um because this this lady had had been there who i think like i say was doing training or something um and they discovered that cassie had um had 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 a heart attack and um that this was more than likely caused by a, a genetic heart condition uh, which is a common thing among Bengals and um, that there wasn't anything to do she wouldn't get better so I, I went down into the theatre and um, and we said goodbye yeah and um, so within an hour of coming home um, and dashing around like a mad fool, I was coming back home without my cat. Um, yeah, Cassie was an incredibly special cat. Um, I I I don't have kids, um, and I'm I'm I've never been one to say. That my cats are my children I just that, that always seems a bit weird to me um but they are my family they are the the things I am the, the non-human things I am the most close to and um they are who I spend my life with I live alone with my two cats and uh Lucy and Cassie has been uh, devastating Still only been a week. I'm still just coping with how quiet the house is. It's not. It's not nice. <laughs> um, I'm not. I don't have kids. Um, I say my my partner died uh, when I was at that sort of age where. Um, it was unlikely that I was going to be meeting somebody new and be old enough to have kids, does that make sense? Um, unless I was literally just like, you know, straight from the funeral to the uh, to Tinder or whatever. 
sorry, macabre humour, I can't help myself. Um, so yeah, so I don't have kids, I very much doubt I will ever have kids unless... Um, yeah, so no, I, I don't have kids and I'm not one of those people who think my animals are, um, are like children, but they are my family um, and they are incredibly close to me. Um, Cal has just, just decided to come and have a sit. Hi Cal. Say hello. <laughs> She's squinting at the camera, probably because of the light. Yeah. She's an odd duck, is Cal, but she's absolutely adorable. She's probably going to jump down now because I've been um, stroking her. I've been faffing with her. So, yes. I am not, I have had a lot of people reach out and say, um, is there anything they can do to help? Um, and I'm not 100% comfortable sort of saying, well, yes, actually, because there are bills and there are things to pay for. Um, because that's just that's just me. That's that's the way I am. Um, so the way I cope with that is um, I, I work harder um, and I raise funds in my own way. But I've sort of been told off by a couple of people because of that. And, and so I, I was thinking of maybe doing a Kickstarter or something um, because I don't like the idea of getting something for nothing. Um, however, I have been persuaded to set up a Kofi account and the details of that are here. I'm going to say no more about that. That is where if, yeah, you, if you don't know what Kofi is, it's um, a site where you can buy me a coffee so to speak i think that that's the principle behind it if that is what you want to do if you want to do that then you know you can and i so though that is what that is and those are the details for it i finally picked something up and not feel so uncomfortable with my hands um i've been sewing this i've had an idea for uh project bags for a while and I just haven't got around to sewing and I know that my crochet isn't for everybody who watches this although as a side note I should say that I have put my Etsy shop into sale and everything is 20% off and everything that sells be that um, there are kits there are patterns there are some um, made things I think there's still quite a lot of the baubles that I mentioned on the last podcast um, they're all 20% off and everything I make uh, will also be going into this fund. All the, all the profit will be going into this fund. That will just sort of help with um, everything at the mo. Um, but what, the other thing that I'm going to be doing is making these bags. Um, I've got some lovely different fabrics. Although I know a lot of people have said how much they like this one. I'll just do a close-up of it. These are linen. Uh, this one is actually lined with linen. They will either be lined with um, linen or cotton. This is also a smaller size. Um, the This is a prototype that I made for myself, hence it's got not as polished as it should be. Um, the, the, the size that I will be making will be slightly larger than this, just because this is a little bit faffy to get... See what I mean? It's not quite the right size. Um, so the, the ones that I will be making will be a larger size. So yeah, so it will have a handle, uh, which will be attached with a swivel clip and tags. And on this side, it will have either a little leather tag, uh, which will say Cassie on it, or there will be a tag on the inside if it's a different style, because I will also be making some drawstring ones as well. They will also all have a stitch marker and I'm intending those stitch markers. This stitch marker, by the way, is a lovely one uh, from Hayley of Ducky Darlings that came with um, last month's um, club. Um, but yeah, they, I'm intending that they will all have beaded stitch markers on. I don't know how feasible that is to do and it's only when I start making these that I'll know. 
um, and I haven't decided how to go about selling these because I can't make a lot. At the moment I've cut out fabric for 20 I think, 20 of this type, the zipped type, there will be drawstring ones as well. Um, you are getting a little bit of Bengal. There's a cast, there's a cow and she's going to try and eat the tree. If you're lucky she might do her Jurassic and Park impression where she looks like one of the brontosauruses. It's one of my favourite things she does. Cow! Cow! Yeah. So yeah, I will keep you posted on how I'm going to go about selling these. Um, it may go, it may be, I will make up a couple of the, how the finished ones will look and put those in as a pre-order on my Etsy shop and you'll <laughs> Okay, I think after an hour or two of um, filming, Cal's definitely decided that she's going to join in. This is what you're here for. We can train Cal to be on the podcast. She's even wibbling the camera. So follow my Instagram. I will have at some point put all my social medias on something on the screen because I know I forgot to talk about them. Uh, follow the Yarn Waffle Podcast Instagram or me, uh, Liz Ward Crochet, on Instagram and any updates will be on there. Um, and yeah, I will figure out a way of doing this. Um, I have, yeah, I just, I can't quite figure out how to do it. They're going to be beautiful bags. There's not going to be many of them. And every penny from making them will go into getting Cassie's memorial, which is really pretty. And I will probably share that at some point. It's on that one. But they are going to be really lovely bags, very special bags. And um, I think... Um, any of you that have been here from the beginning and want something of yourself to remember Cassie, um, I think think it it would be a really a really nice thing to to have. Um, and also a lot of my love will be going into them. So yeah, I think I'm gonna have to leave that there because I've probably recorded so much stuff, mostly of me crying my eyes out, that I'm gonna have to edit it down into some semblance of a podcast. The light is coming in and looking really pretty on my ficus behind me. Um, Cal is here and I'm going to grab her and we are going to say goodbye. Oh dear. Cal. Cal. Boo. Cal. So, from Cal and me, that's it for today, and we'll see you next week or the week after. Oh, look at this. Yeah, I guess that means you're ready. Can I say any question? Question.